Welcome into our coverage of the Big East Big 12 battle on ESPN. Couple of old Big East foes going at it in Morgantown. The 15th ranked UConn Huskies taking on Bob Huggins and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Alongside the former coach Tim Welsh, I'm Chucky Kemp. And really good matchup tonight, Tim, highlighted by a couple lethal guards. RJ Cole for UConn, Taz Sherman for West Virginia. Well, some great memories, great history, unbelievable back battles, matchups, both in Morgantown stores and in Madison Square Garden over the years. And look, when you look at these two teams, they mirror what they've done in the past when they were championship type teams. For West Virginia, they're not pressed Virginia so much, but they still will turn you over and it runs through their point guard, Taz Sherman. He's a guy that will get into the paint. He has a terrific mid-range game. Bob Huggins will lean on him all night long offensively. And then from UConn and Dan Hurley, it starts with RJ Cole. He really is the guy who runs the show on both ends. Look for West Virginia to try to double team him coming off ball screens, force him sideline, and not let him get into the paint and create activity. Names out for UConn. Adama Sanogo and Tyrese Martin continue to miss time. They'll be out for a few weeks. Sean McNeil starts tonight. He missed the game against Radford on the weekend with a lower back issue, but he is back in the lineup for West Virginia. Sanogo and Martin, a huge piece of what UConn does so well, which is athleticism and rebounding. We'll see if West Virginia can hang tight in that category tonight, a place they have struggled this season. UConn controls the tip. We get our first look at R.J. Cole and company. A UConn team ranked 15th in the nation. They are 8-1. and one. They've got some good wins. It's Hawkins and a Cook who fill those spots of the injured starters. This shot up, and McNeil pulls down the first rebound for West Virginia. They're happy to see him back. Well, Jordan Hawkins can make that shot. He's got to be more consistent. A little early in the shot clock, but look for Dan Hurley to go to him, especially in transition. McNeil back into the lineup. Some a lot of new faces in the starting lineup for West Virginia this year. McNeil pulls up and he's on the board already. Just nursing that bulky back, but he warmed up well today. Bob Huggins, I don't think ever doubted he'd be ready for tonight. Isaiah Whaley with it. Whaley to Cole. Back to him in the corner, wide open for three. No, and an offensive rebound for a Cook, a Cook. Well, Cook, a Cook just get rounding into form, still coming back from that injury from two years ago with the Achilles. Uh, played very well in their last game, stepping into the starting lineup. There's Dan Hurley in his fourth season at UConn, and Tim, he's got this thing headed in the right direction. They had a couple losing seasons, which is like the world's ending in stores. But Dan Hurley has taken over. His win percentage has increased every year. And they made it to the tournament for the first time since 2016 last year. Well, Dan Hurley at practice on Monday was reiterating over and over and over. This is our first road game. We're going to have to have composure. We're going to have to be strong with the ball. We're going to expect to be fouled and it not called. And you've got to play through contact and be ready for those, those West Virginia runs and just stay within your system. West Virginia's played Marquette this year. They've played Clemson. They've played Pittsburgh. Their lone loss to Marquette. But I think you can say this is their biggest test of the season on their home court. Certainly a big crowd tonight for Bob Huggins and company. He's in year 15. And the next one on the list, on the all-time wins list that Huggins is chasing is the... UConn legend Jim Calhoun. Well, Hugs a little bit uh, hinted it that he's thinking about retirement earlier in this week when talking about Jim <laughs> Calhoun, but no way. We, we can't lose any more of these guys. They're the face of the game still after all these years. Calhoun just retired, but we talked about Huggins and Bayheim. We already lost Krzyzewski and Williams. We need these guys to stay around. Another good shot from Sean McNeil. He's got both buckets in this game for West Virginia. Well, he's got terrific footwork. He doesn't need much time or space to get that jumper off. Hawkins in trouble. Whaley. Cole trying to get downhill. He's so shifty. He gets his own rebound. Back to Whaley. He did a nice job to corral it. And soft touch in the lane for their first field goal. Well, this has been a problem all year long for West Virginia. You think of West Virginia, press Virginia, no, they're not that. And one thing they really aren't that annoys Bob Huggins is they're not physical on the boards. 
Easy look there for Isaiah Cottrell. Has to like what he's seen from them offensively to this point. And they cleared out a side, did a good job with the pick and roll. UConn did not rotate from the backside. Andre Jackson going to work, poked away. Jackson regains possession. McNeil got a piece of it too. West Virginia has one of the best turnover margins in the country. You see hands everywhere. And Sean McNeil, they do a great job of freeing him up a little baseline pick, and he just does a really good job with his footwork to turn square and not fade, but steps into the shot. Sean McNeil double figures in every game but one this year. He missed the Radford game on the weekend. Their second leading score at 12 points per game behind Taz Sherman. They end up triple teaming Jackson. Cole open for three. And a rebound. Jackson puts it back in. Another offensive rebound for UConn. Well, obviously UConn's going to hit the boards hard because they understand West Virginia really does a good job of extending their defense, but that time did not get back in the paint to take care of the boards. Foul on Andre Jackson. Talked about West Virginia and their turnover margin. This is where UConn makes their money, the rebounding margin, plus 10 so far this season. That is top 15 in the nation, and West Virginia is on the negative side of things. Their first two games, they were out-rebounded by a combined 31. And they won both uh, those games because they forced over 50 turnovers, but it's been an issue. Sherman well, stepped back. Nice well, shot. Very hard to defend. This little step back. He gets you lean like he's going to take you into that mid-range game, which he's very good at. And then the step back. He's been not as solid with a three this year, but that time looked very smooth. Just a tick under 30% from three on the season. Whaley mid-range from him and tipped away. They just keep things alive. Sherman able to run that one down. Now they're long, they're athletic, and they're active on the glass. That time, good job recovering. Cottrell on the charge inside. It's a turnover on West Virginia. Sherman this time takes Jackson, gets him off balance like he's going to drive to the hole. Great job with, with the footwork and the balance. And Jackson is a terrific defender. That time just got overextended on the crossover. Mountaineer fans loving it. Well, without Four Martin and Sonogo, Chucky, what happens is you lose two very good rebounders, but they come in, they've got other guys that can rebound the ball, and you see they are flying to the rim early. Sonogo and Martin also combined for about 28 points per game, but depth is one strength of UConn, and it's certainly being tested over the coming weeks. Cole saves the rebound. Here comes UConn. Jackson with a nice catch. Bounce pass and laid up and in by Isaiah Whaley. Timeout on the floor. And we're all tied up at nine apiece with 15.34 to play. Good start in Morgantown. PN in Morgantown, the Big East Big 12 battle. There's Bob Huggins in year number 15 at West Virginia. His Mountaineers all locked up here at nine apiece with 15.34 to play. Here's the list, and Huggins, number four on the all-time winningest head coach. They, he is chasing Jim Calhoun, the UConn legend, Bayheim up there. Coach K, the leader by a mile, Roy Williams, finds his way on there as well. How many did you uh, get from those guys, I guess? How many did you give them in the other column on this list? Well, we had our fair share of both sides, I think. I'm not sure if we ever got hugs. We didn't have enough opportunities. He's got it rolling down here. And, uh, you know, Dan Hurley was trying to tell his team about playing in the in the Coliseum, in the WV Coliseum. It's, it really is one of the hardest places in America. They are unbelievable fans. They are loud and energized for 40 minutes. West Virginia tied up. Loving to see Sean McNeil back out there if you're a Mountaineer fan. Looked good early on. Missed the Radford game with the lower back issue. That shot off the mark from the Old Dominion transfer Malik Curry. 
Jackson across, three from the wing, no good from Jordan Hawkins, the freshman. Well, Hawkins is an unbelievable talent. He's getting the minutes now without Martin, and he will develop quickly. People rave about him in the UConn program as well as a cook and company. This long at the rim, and West, West Virginia's got to do a better job of not letting UConn change sides of the floor with the pass or the dribble here. Just that little pick and roll, and West Virginia doesn't do a good job. Curry doesn't get over in front. You've got to get in front of Whaley before he makes the catch at the rim. Isaiah Whaley, grad student from North Carolina. It's the third one to fall. Couple subs in for the Huskies. Samson Johnson, one of their big time recruits, number 41 on the ESPN 100. Saw some big minutes against Grambling this weekend. Career high 20 minutes and put together a really nice game. He'll see some more time right now with Sunogo out. Well, with Sunogo out, Samson Johnson is going to get the minutes. He didn't early. And probably UConn fans are saying, why aren't you playing him? He's an unbelievable talent and recruit. And the thing is, is that you're not going to play for Dan Hurley until you totally understand all of the system, starting with defense. And that's the hardest thing for freshmen to adjust to. But you can see Johnson, he is. A terrific athlete, got great feet, and can step out a little bit, make shots. Six foot ten, he's lean, he's 205 pounds. You see the numbers there against Grambling, five points, six rebounds, few blocks, but he fits the mold of this UConn team, long and athletic. So Saboyan at the line misses his first free throw. One of five guys who are on this West Virginia roster thanks to the extra COVID year. Well, Bob Huggins talked about it. He said, this reminds me of some of the old UConn teams. And believe me, we had a lot of sleepless nights thinking about those teams. Just long, athletic, 10 shot blocks a game. And UConn right now, they're plus 10 rebounding on the season. They block shots. They get out in transition. And they have a lot of different ways to score, both outside, transition, and at the rim. R.J. Cole tucks it, and then a tough pass. Johnson couldn't handle it, and a turnover. Well, Husky defense is they're going to pressure the ball. They're going to get out. You look almost eight blocks a game, and they're going to do something with it. They're, they're not going to tr gamble too much either. The hard ball pressure, hard denial on the wing, and then great help before the, they get angles to the rim. They force their fair share of turnovers as well, almost 18 a game. Osa Boyan inside blocks the shot. You were just talking about it. Whaley blocked it. Osa Boyan misses again, and Whaley pulls down the rebound and RJ Cole wants to move a little bit here for the Huskies. Whaley and Jackson have all 12 UConn points. Another turnover, a little sloppy there from the freshman Johnson. Here's Malik Curry. West Virginia started the game four for four from the field. They're 0 for their last five. Curry misses, 0 for their last six now. But McNeil is wide open for three. That's good offense, though, by West Virginia. Immediately looking to go outside before UConn can recover to the shooter on the perimeter to contest. Good rebound after the Tyler Pauly miss. Taz Sherman working on Jackson. Sherman uses the left hand. He gets tipped away back to Taz. They'll reset it with 15 on the shot clock. Hurry waves off of Savoyan. Got to be in shape to play against U uh, UConn. They just attack you with, and run at you. And there's the footwork we we're talking about by McNeil. This doesn't need a lot of room. Gets you leaning back a little, just a little bit, then the fade away from the corner. McNeil has seven in the game already. Couple rebounds to go with it. And West Virginia has the lead again. Jackson, they're going to let him shoot that in the corner. Oh, and he makes him pay. Andre Jackson, he was just three of 12 coming into this game, but he knocks that one down. They don't want him shooting too many perimeter shots. He's still working to develop and work on his form from the perimeter, but he is a confident player. Dan Hurley says, you know, 
Sometimes we don't know what he's gonna do. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, but he is a talent. Curry couldn't get the roll. Cole, again, going quickly. RJ Cole, Samson Johnson. No, and the rebound belongs to Damon Kerrigan. Dan Hurley says he can step out and make shots, but I'm not sure he wants Samson Johnson shooting that as a trailer coming down in transition from three. They had missed eight straight before that last McNeil three. West Virginia offense starting to stall a bit. Taz Sherman, what a shot from Taz. We mentioned it earlier, terrific mid-range game, but he's only shot 30% from the three on the season, and Bob Huggins has been waiting for him and McNeil to warm up and play downtown together. This is exactly what we expected the first nine and a half minutes of this game. And it belongs to West Virginia. Now, Taz Sherman can make things happen. Just a great hesitation. Gets you leaning off balance. Terrific defense. Better offense. College basketball doubleheader for you on Saturday afternoon. It's eighth ranked Kansas hosting Missouri. The border war resumes at 315 Eastern. Then old school rivals squaring off in South Bend as number 10 Kentucky takes on Notre Dame at 515 Eastern. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. One tap, Bill Self tapping his feet right now because this team's rounded in the form and uh, that was a very impressive win over St. John's on the road and you know, with Baylor, Kansas, Texas, and oh, by the way, Iowa State in the discussion early in the Big 12. Just a little bit of a shock after they won two games last year, and now they're 8-0 ranked, and they've got Iowa tomorrow on ESPN2. What a turnaround that's been. Bridges back in for West Virginia. And all McNeil and Taz Sherman for them. Oh, McNeil from a long way away. Now into transition they go, Jalen Gaffney. Well, major mistake by McNeil. You're top of the key, you take a 25-foot jump shot, and then you run in and try to get the rebound. Listen, you want to be aggressive trying to get loose balls, but you first, your first responsibility from that spot is be the deep man back. You have to protect, and he did not. There was no one back for West Virginia. West Virginia started the game three for three on two pointers. They're 0 for eight on their last few. He yeah. does now. He runs in and no one's back on defense. If that happens, someone's got to rotate back from the forward spot. But his responsibility there is to stay back and protect. An easy one for UConn. 12 of UConn's 17 points coming in the paint. Gaffney had the last two. You see his numbers this season really solid. Junior out of Columbus, New Jersey played in every game since coming to UConn. This is his 64th straight. Tyler Pauly thought about it, gives it up instead, and Whaley way off the mark. Adrian Johnson back to Bridges. Taz Sherman gets downhill, gets the bump, and he gets the bucket to go with it. Now that's terrific offense by West Virginia because you cannot be loose with the basketball. You have to have good spacing. They had five out there, and Sherman took advantage of it. A cook, a cook didn't slide over. You've got to give a little bit of help, but the help's got to come from the inside first. And you see Whaley gets attached to his man. He's got to release and find Sherman outside the paint. As Sherman had 27 on Saturday against Radford. Four steals as well, which Bob Huggins will like. I asked him if he's just become that alpha, if he's embraced that role as a scorer, and he said he's exactly what we thought he would be when he came from the JUCO, because that's what he was when he transferred. He's a JUCO All-American and a lethal scorer, and he was at Collin College. West Virginia lost a lot off of last year's team. 
Oh, Cole, a little spin cycle for McNeil. What a great move from RJ Cole. Well, that's mismatch right there on the wing. Cole took advantage of it. He just kind of got McNeil leaning one way and just easy money, short baseline. Adrian Johnson with it for the Mountaineers. Back to Sherman. Really controlling things right now. Johnson on the drive. Some contact. And they go the other direction. Offensive foul. It's Samson Johnson sliding in and taking the charge. Well, all coaches want you to take charges, but this is something you have to do if you want to eat in, in the UConn program. You better give up your body and work on that daily, and it's a high-intensity drill if you've ever been to practice. Thompson and a cook, a cook, the two bigs out there for UConn. It's sw stripped away by Kedrian Johnson. Quick decision defensively. Now they go inside. Pauly Polycap misses, and Johnson rebounds. Well, Pauly Polycap's given them some good minutes over the last few games, and Hawkins is pulling the trigger quickly. And this is what Dan Hurley said. He's, you know, he's a future pro probably, but he's got a lot to learn. And that. Lost possession of the dribble, a little loose with the basketball at the top, and probably a quick three out of transition. McNeil gets this spot in the mid range. Sean McNeil again in West Virginia back in front. McNeil's really only had one off night all season long. He's been very consistent. He and Sherman, they put this team on his back. Bob Huggins just waiting for that third, fourth, fifth guy to step up for him offensively and being consistent on the backboards. 13 minutes in, seven lead changes already for the old two <laughs> Big East foes. Make it eight lead changes. Nice take from Jalen Gaffney. Well, Gaffney will give him good minutes. He's a solid backup. He makes plays. He's smart. Good on-ball defender. Dan Hurley trusts him to come in, run the team, and stick with it defensively and stick with the system. Polycap. Adrian Johnson fell down, looking for help, and gets it to McNeil. Five to shoot. McNeil has to go quickly. Steps over McNeil. No, and a whistle underneath. I think it's staying here. Well, Bob Huggins talked about R.J. Cole. We have to stop him. We first and foremost, we have to send that second defender at him. Keep him under control. He has been terrific all season long for the Huskies. Welch. Indiana proving to be a really dangerous team this year. UConn, they've proven themselves that as well. They lead by one here at West Virginia in Morgantown. Nine lead changes already in this game. There's been 41 points scored. Four players have 32 of those points. It's been a two-man clinic for both teams. Which is kind of unusual for UConn. And you think about them, and the first thing that jumps out at you is balance. But they're really trying to find a new identity with Martin and Sonogo out of the lineup and being their first road game. I think they've reacted very well and fought West Virginia with every challenge. But this game is going to be really about who gets who gets the better shots because West Virginia now, they know that they've got to bring their hard hat tonight. Bang, and get inside position. So far, they've done a very good job just keeping UConn off both the offensive glass, doing a pretty good job containing and going to the offensive glass themselves. Saboyan is one of those guys, seems like he always brings his hard hat. Isaiah Whaley back in for UConn. Saboyan out of Toronto. Arkansas Transfer. This is his third year at West Virginia. All defensive team member. Big 12 Conference last season. This is both free throws. The Cook rebounds. Gaffney and RJ Cole. Cole, that's a tough shot. Wow. You gotta get tighter on Cole. You gotta make him go right, try to give a little help, and then 
Make sure he doesn't create and rotate cut off angles in the lane, but you cannot lay off him. There's McNeil looking for an answer. Eight to shoot. Taz Sherman really deep three. Offensive rebound. Osaboyan again. West Virginia's really struggling to get anything going into the paint. They, they take a lot of long threes early in this game. Another three from Sherman. He won't miss that one. Tied up at 23. He's a 37 percent three three point shooter a year ago. Only 30 this year, but he's starting to get into a rhythm tonight against this tight UConn defense. Scary to think he already averages 21 a game. He shot just around 30 percent from three. He is a score. Hawkins travel. Well, there's the freshman mistake that Hawkins tends to make. He's trying to rush. He's so talented, he wants to make things happen and he wants to hit that home run right away, right on the first pitch. He's got to be a little bit more patient in the half court, let the offense come to him, then attack. And you mentioned it. This is really UConn's first true road game. And so for Hawkins, it's his first road game of his career, and it comes against the Bob Huggins coach team in Morgantown. Osa Boyan with a physical take right there. Well, not only that, Chucky, but this is a relatively new team in the last two years, and you've got the freshman and Hawkins getting major minutes out there starting. But these guys didn't play again in front of any crowd, so to speak, a year ago. So getting used to this atmosphere, it's not easy, but there's a veteran move. Isaiah Whaley been around the block a few times. Already nine points for Whaley tonight. Mr. Boyan thought about the three. Whaley would have let him have it. McNeil steps back. Sean McNeil! Have yourself a night. Welcome back, sir. Doesn't need much time space and deep range tonight. Mountaineers by three. A cook in trouble and he's fouled. Pauly Cap got him with 324 to play in the first half. We're looking at the power forwards, the inside players, the guys that really don't score, but bring your hard hat physicality inside and Whaley missed the Michigan State game and they really missed him because you could see what he can do on the baseline. Well Tim it is their first true road game and they're without some of their top players and here they are only down three to this point I think given the circumstance they played pretty well. And they have and they withstood this barrage of three-point shooting by West Virginia, but you know, West Virginia does, has done a really good job. Only two turnovers. UConn turns their opponents over to the tune of about 18 per game, but UConn continues to attack in the half court. They have just dominated in the paint to this point. One-point game under three to play in the first half. Bridges trying to get it to Sherman. R.J. Cole did not want Taz Sherman to touch the basketball. Here goes Taz. Slicing and contact will send Taz Sherman to the line. Oh, Connecticut will live and die all night long. And most of the time they live with this offense, the pick and roll game. And if you don't rotate, you see they stay with the dribbler too long. No one rotates over. And that's an easy one for a cook a cook. And now a cook a cook. Played very well in their last win over Gramley. Did not play that well in the Bahamas. And Dan Hurley said, you know, he played 32 minutes total, didn't score a point. We need some more scoring from a Cook of Cook, especially with Sonogo and Martin out. He's got to be a guy that goes up and gets eight to ten points a game for us. Sherman, an 86% free throw shooter. West Virginia's lead is three. A little soft pressure here, Chucky, just to take some time off the clock. Not the old press Virginia where they're trying to get a steal, but just soft pressure just to contain. Here 
Here's Cole, guarded by the freshman Kobe Johnson. Into the corner, Gaffney. And he airballed it, a cook pulls down the rebound. RJ Cole fires away and it sticks between the glass and the rim. West Virginia basketball. In that last possession, which it was an air ball, West Virginia's done a pretty good job of taking care of the defensive glass, keeping UConn out of the paint. And UConn does as good a job as anybody, just attacking for that second chance opportunity. Well, the Huskies have an 18 to 6 advantage in the paint as far as points go, but they're just one of 11 on threes, and they've missed their last nine. Here's McNeil, and a little too close on the defense. Get Gaffney. Well, they got this right, there's no doubt about it. He's in the cylinder, he's in the space of the offensive player. The offensive player has allowed that space to make a move. He cannot get up into his face that tight. One and one for McNeil. On Saturday, don't miss the third-ranked UConn women taking on UCLA in the fifth annual Never Forget Tribute Classic from the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. It's the Bruins and the Huskies at 1 Eastern on ABC. Paige Becker's out six to eight weeks. Fracture, a left knee tibial plateau fracture. That is a big miss for Gino Ariema and company. She averages over 21 a game. Huskies with just 10 to shoot. Gaffney skips it across. Three ball in the wing, he's fouled. The shooter was Tyler Pauley. Who's hit 16 threes this season, and he goes to the line for three. You know, that's what Paulie is, is he's a three-point shooter, and that's his spot over there on the rotation. They're kind of out of sorts here and running at the shooter. You've got to be under control. And Pauly Cap just runs at runs at Polly from the right up the center gut. He should have attacked him right on his side and then ran by on the contest. Holly connects, grad student from Miramar, Florida. And it's 24 points in that double overtime thriller against Auburn. He had six threes in that game. They've got experienced him. They've got exciting, talented youth. As we see Malik Curry check in for Kedrian, or excuse me, Kobe Johnson. This UConn team. They'd really like Jordan Hawkins to come along as another big-time three-point shooter, but they've got a really nice makeup. Well, they do, and here we go again. Oh, wow. Pressure on the ball, just an unforced air. Blocked off the glass, the chase down from Pauly Cap. Curry hands off, Sherman three. No good, and this place was ready to erupt. Both teams putting tremendous pressure on the basketball, overplaying on the wings, giving a lot of help on the pick and roll. A cook. No. Hawkins couldn't keep it alive. They Malik block Curry. out by Curry. Timeout, Bob Huggins. We'll be back in 30 seconds. West Virginia up two. Huskies 31-29 here in Morgantown. Tomorrow night on ESPN, the 31st annual Home Depot College Football Awards Show, a two-hour celebration of the top performers and moments from the regular season. And because last year's virtual special was so successful, they're doing it again this year. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. One app, one tap. Well, no controversy in college football with the selection committee and all that. It's all... Easy going, but Cincinnati made it in as the fourth seed, and they get Alabama as the number one seed in the first round. West Virginia trying to carry Cincinnati. a lead to halftime. Cincinnati can't be denied this year, right? It's going to be a great Final Four. 
Really, everything happened that Cincinnati needed for them to not have a reason to not get in this year, which is, has been hard in the past for teams not in the Power Fives. Osa Boyne a little slow to get up here for West Virginia on the baseline. Osa Boyan just throws his body around on both ends. He's known famous for his defense taking charges, but tonight doing a great job of carving out space right around the rim and getting to the free throw line. Yeah, hopefully just a cramp. He kind of straightened that leg when he was going down awkwardly. Another 30-second timeout. It is not disappointed so far. The Big East Big 12 battle between UConn and West Virginia. A couple old Big East foes going at it. The 23rd all-time meeting. The last one, November 24th. West Virginia was not a part of the Big East at that time, but they won the last game 78-68. The last Huskies win was in overtime at MSG of the Big East tournament in 2012. This has been exactly what we've expected. And I think it's exactly what Dan Early wanted. Just an early season test, get his team used to a hostile environment before they've got to go on the road in the Big East. And, and because it, we talked about earlier, for all intents and purposes, there was no crowds in the Big East a year ago. But he, he's going to have to go to a lot of hostile places. And they play an early Big East game December 18th against Providence. It really starts to heat up this Saturday, too. St. Bonaventure, you've seen the Bonnies a couple times. That is a really talented team there. Marquette who's been a nice shock early on. Shock of smartness first season there. It will not get easier for UConn. Oh, Savoyan gets one. It's five for 11 from the free throw line so far as West Virginia. A five second differential here for the Huskies. Pick the time, run a little pick and roll, and then get the ball going from one side to the other and see if they can get into the gaps, get West Virginia to overextend and maybe for a driving kick. Adrian Johnson guarding RJ Cole. Here they go, seven to shoot. Great defense from Johnson so far. Gaffney turns, flips it, blocked at the rim, but a Shot clock violation is whistled after the rejection from Polycap. He's had two nice blocks in this game so far. Mm -hmm. Dan Hurley, Dan Hurley wanted a goaltending. And but this is just terrific defense and the rotation on the backside by Polycap and I'm not sure. I think that was goaltending. Yeah, it was on its was. way down. <laughs> it just had peaked. Five to shoot. Curry. Malik Curry lost the handle, and Cole won't even send one up. Battle so far. McNeil and Sherman have combined for 26 of West Virginia's 32 points. McNeil has been outstanding in his first game back. We send you to the studio, the E-Trade Halftime Report, with Kevin Connors and Sean Farnham. All right. You're watching... The Big East Big 12 battle on ESPN in Morgantown, West Virginia, leading UConn 32 to 29. Alongside the former coach, Tim Welsh, I'm Chucky Kemp. Tim, UConn's without two of their top players. On the other side, West Virginia's two, top two players, they've showed up in a big way so far. Well, Bob Huggins has talked about it all season long, and Taz Sherman and Sean McNeil are the go-to guys for West Virginia. And Sean McNeil came right off that injury with his back, missed the last game, but was on fire early and often, in rhythm, great footwork. They ran some special plays for him on the baseline, and then Taz Sherman as well just did a really good job just finding McNeil, running the offense, playing good on-ball defense on R.J. Cole, and Sherman shot some deep threes. He's been really inconsistent all season long from the three-point from three point range, but tonight he has been on fire, taking him within the rhythm of the offense. And that's the thing about UConn, they're a very difficult team to play against defensively because they don't give you anything easy. You really have to work the ball from side to side. They turn you over, and West Virginia has not turned the ball over very much tonight. Our game summary, and you see the one for 12 from three for UConn. That's a big number right now. They have dominated in the paint with 18 to six in that category they lead, but 
have not found their stroke from three. The rebound numbers are pretty even as well. West Virginia just minus two. I think if you told Bob Huggins that before the game, he'd probably be all right with it, wouldn't he? Well, absolutely, and he's been really lamenting about that all season long. Every year he does, because that's what they, where they hang their hat. But UConn is a terrific rebounding team, but West Virginia has held their own tonight. Andre Jackson trying to get his own rebound. It goes out of bounds and belongs to West Virginia. So they get a stop on the opening possession. I guess no changes for West Virginia from an offensive standpoint, right? I mean, they hit some tough shots, but overall took care of the ball pretty well. They did take care of the ball well. They didn't really you know, try to do too much. They tried to do most of their offense was off the dribble and through Sherman and McNeil. I would imagine they're going to do the same thing. You can't get too out of control against this UConn defense or they'll make you pay. Here's McNeil, 10 to shoot, pulls up. No good, rebound goes to Jordan Hawkins and he'll bring it forward. Hawkins, big step block shot there for Taz Sherman. Jackson's extra pass and Cole comes to get it. RJ Cole so shifty. He'll do a good job on Cole, just containing him, giving him a little bit of space, but not too much. Look at Cottrell. Far he is away from the hoop. Inside, blocked by Cottrell. It stays on this end. I thought they might have got Cottrell with a little block on the drive, but here it is. A terrific pass by Hawkins, and it's like it was all ball. Cook wanted the foul, as did his coach. It might have been Taz Sherman again. Getting that block actually, Trell kind of combined for it. It's a shot clock violation to the dismay of West Virginia fans because Kedrian Johnson had an easy bucket at the other end. Bob Huggins arguing about this. I think he was saying, it was it tipped? Why did the clock start? The official was telling him it had been tipped. Ron Groover, Burt Smith, Jeffrey Anderson, our officiating crew this evening. There was just one on the shot clock on yeah, the they inbound. Got, right, Hugs understands that. I mean, they did not have possession. They did not get the shot off. I mean, if West Virginia had possession, had stolen the inbounds pass, they would have had been able to avoid the shot clock violation for Connecticut, but Jeff Anderson, good job of explaining it to Bob Huggins. Saboyan hands to McNeil, and they are really suffocating Sean McNeil right now. Saboyan will handle to the big man. Oh, Saboyan off the glass. Saboyan, very offensive tonight, looking for his shots, looking for his drives to the rim. Usually the def defender tonight, aggressive offensively. This is the largest lead for either team. R.J. Cole gets loose, just a miscommunication defensively. They doubled on the wing, and no one rotated over. And again, that's not what they were trying to do there. But they attacked the ball. No one rotated on the backside. Sherman mid-range. And a Cook tries to save it under his own basket. Dangerous. A whistle. And I believe there's a foul against UConn here. Maybe on Hawkins it is. Jalen Bridges in early, early exit to the bench here in the second half. But also Boyan has done a really good job. Activity on the glass. He's a good playmaker from that forward spot. As you see him, he's always involved in the mix. Good screen setter. Bob Huggins likes him in the game especially a game like this that's so physical and athletic. McNeil off the inbound, got a really good look. Tipped away, Osaboyan rebounds, and out to McNeil. Oh, he lost it. That's happened a few times tonight. Malik Curry's had it happen a couple times. Now McNeil just loses it on his own. Open three, Hawkins. And a good rebound there for Damon Kerrigan. That's a good look out of transition. Jackson did a good job. On the push, he's a very good passer. Here they come again in transition. Ripped away. Probably a good decision there by Osaboy in the foul. That's his first foul. 
Bob Huggins knows if you get loose with the basketball, this game could turn very quickly because UConn's pressure will be relentless in the half court. They are going to hard pressure the basketball, trace the passes, and attack and overplay on the wings. Harrigan will come out. Pauly Polycap, the DePaul transfer. Super senior comes in. One super senior for another, as a matter of fact, Harrigan from Florida International. A cook. Andre Jackson spinning. Jackson tries to tuck a pass in to a cook, but he's fouled. Nice spin to get free by Andre Jackson. I thought he was going to go up right up on the rim with it, which he probably should have, but this is what Jackson does. He sometimes gets a little bit out of control. There's the foul. He had the opportunity after the foul just to put the ball up on the rim and go to the line. Three minutes gone, still just a three-point game here in the second half. RJ Cole, what a great move. Keeps it from the defender and high off the glass. Well, the start of the second half, West Virginia on the defensive end of the floor, a couple mistakes. They're not rotating, they're not containing as well as they did in the first half. Cole guarding Kedrian Johnson, Osaboyan out there, Taz Sherman, McNeil, and Polly Cap. Sherman. Oh, wow. Taz Sherman in the lane with the trees. With the bump on top of it. Should have been an and one. Lead back to three. Both coaches working hard on the officials. Cole. They've really tried to deny R.J. Cole the ball, especially early in possessions. You talked about that. Bob Huggins probably wanting to pull him as far out of the game as possible. They double him here, poke it away, and a steal. Polycap in transition. It's blocked by a cook. Great recovery Jackson. by a cook. A lot of bumps and bruises right now with no whistles. And a little sloppy on both sides. That's a UConn turnover. It'll be West Virginia basketball when we return. They're going to attack Cole. Coming back, a cook on the attack. Hold your hat. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must have for Big 12 fans. More than 180 men's and women's college basketball games. That includes the TCU women taking on 18th ranked Texas A&M Sunday afternoon at 2 Eastern. If you're a Big 12 fan, you've got to have it. Sign up at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. The Big 12 trying to pick up a significant win in the Big East Big 12 battle here as West Virginia meets UConn. So far, Big East leads 3-2. How about follow us tonight as well, Marquette in Kansas State. How about our friend Dick Vitale on his first trip to lovely Waco this weekend for a little Baylor Villanova. I'm sure Scott Drew will have uh, Chip Gaines out in the welcoming committee down Magnolia Way in lovely Waco. Well, it's good to see Dickie V out and about on basketball games. I think everybody's excited to see him. And you know if he's in the building, it's a big game. He's already done some big ones this year as Polycap lays it in. That's yeah, a Virginia. great set out of a timeout by Bob Huggins. And Paul Polycap, Polly Polycap has been uh, probably their best big guy over the last few games. And Bob Huggins continues to give him more minutes. UConn had six turnovers the entire first half. They already have three in this half alone. That was a nice move by Cole, but missed. And a cook missed the putback. Now Osaboyan will have to bring it forward. Oh, the easy putback on the weak side. West Virginia, for fortunate, did not rotate down and block out a cook, but he missed the bunny. Adrian Johnson. McNeil still with 13. Long three. 
And cannot get the roll. Rolls out of bounds. I think that was off a Yukon foot, and it was. It might have been off Whaley after a cook pulled it down. Well, you can see that what Dan Hurley told his team at halftime. No more threes. And McNeil got that one off. And he made a couple tough ones in the first half. But you can see UConn's making a concerted effort to really get out on the shoe tops of McNeil and Sherman in the second half. Sherman being guarded by he's kind of a reckless pass as Cole got a piece of it to McNeil. Well, RJ Cole is overplaying Sean McNeil and saying there's no way you're catching the ball out on the perimeter. They're going to have to go in another direction. So they're going to have to run Sean McNeil off some screens on the baseline or even some dribble handoffs. Sherman, and it's an illegal screen. He kind of hesitated, and Polycap tried to adjust with him. Well, what happens is UConn does such a great job of defending this ball screen on all ball screens, whether it's a middle ball screen, a side ball screen, they try to force you to the side, they'll give that quick help, they'll show hard, and then they'll recover, but they're also rotating on the backside so there's no one open down the middle of the floor. Huggins talking to Polycap. What was the explanation? What was his words of advice for Pauly, just, Polycap? Well, set the screen. Stabilize your feet, and if you can't set the screen, then just roll to the basket. If, if it's not there, it's not there. You can't force it and commit a foul. There was a travel. Dan Hurley not happy right now with what they've done offensively here in the second half. Well, West Virginia, when you watch film on them and, and see them up close as we have over the course of the first part of the season, their defense is underrated. You know, they're not press Virginia, but they're half court defense. They're still forcing turnovers. They're still overplaying. They're still harassing and making you feel uncomfortable. West Virginia, they had just six points in the paint in the first half. They already have six here in the second half. And it's a foul under the bucket as they were going right back to it. Osaboyan. Well, Osaboyan only averages five points a game, and he is been very aggressive tonight on the offensive end looking for his own shot this will be a seventh and eighth shot at the free throw line he's not a great free throw shooter 36 and a half percent he's two for six tonight so just about right on that pace you're being kind mr kent <laughs> bob huggins would say he's horrific free throw shooter i think bob huggins he's a little more blunt than i am i try to Try to keep it a little kinder. He's he's not afraid to tell you how it is. You gotta have some thick skin playing for Bob Huggins, don't you? Well, you do. But one thing you've learned over over the course of all these years, you don't get all over 900 wins without your players absolutely loving to play for you, and that's what they do. They play hard. They know how to take it, the criticism and the coaching, but. They also know Bob Hawkins will be there for them at all costs. RJ Cole, that is a big shot for him. Cole has 11 points now, and they have done everything they can to try and keep him in check, Tim, still into double figures. Well, that's a great job by UConn. No, they, get, they move Cole off the ball, set a little flare screen for him, so he doesn't always have the ball in his hands. He knows how to be a scorer without the ball. Now West Virginia out of control in the half court. Bob Huggins did not like it. R.J. Cole has given UConn the lead. Back-to-back -back triples for the superstar who averages just over 16 a game. Well, it's a lot easier to contain in half court. And once you start turning the ball over, your defense is disjointed. And that time, they did not find Cole after the turnover. Osaboyan? No. And that is probably not the shot Bob Huggins and West Virginia wanted down one. Absolutely not the shot. He's 0 for 1 in the season. He, he's not a shooter from the perimeter at all. They have really started to dial up the pressure on Sherman and McNeil. And here's RJ Cole. Well, first they started a little half court set. They ran him off a flare screen on the wing and did a good job, a little misdirection. 
Went away and then came back to him, but the out of transition off the turnover, not close enough. Someone's got to be attached to him at all times. Daphne guarded tightly by Kedrian Johnson. Cole kicks it out. Two to shoot. Gaffney has to force it. That goes off of Andre Jackson. But it's UConn back in front. 11.45 to play. Dan Hurley. Yes, sir. He's in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. You know, one voice who's been such a big part of that, Dick Vitale. You talked about him on the Baylor Villanova call this weekend. Great to see Dickie V out and about as he receives treatment. He has uh, already seen one big upset. It was in the building when Kansas lost to Dayton earlier this year. You know, anything can happen, and we've got one tonight that we expected to be good, and it has lived up to expectations. Curry lost it. That's the third time Malik Curry has lost the ball without any help from a defender. Well, it's not because the ball is wet or slippery. It's because UConn's defense is doing a great job of pressuring the ball, and then on the skip pass, closing out in a split second. Their defense has been harassing the second half, taking away West Virginia's threes, and then offensively doing a really good job of spacing the court against this West Virginia defense. Curry gets called for his second foul. Try to contain R.J. Cole and company. Cole had just four points in the first half, and he's been giving Bob Huggins nightmares here in the second half. Ten points on four of six shooting. Here is R.J. Cole. Screen from a cook, six to shoot. Cole dancing. Cole, right hand, spins out, tip back in. Counted for Tyler Pauly. That started with R.J. Cole, though, the ability to get to the rim, draw that second defender over the he for help, and then on the backside, Pauly, nobody rotated down to block him out. Wild throw and another West Virginia turnover up top. Jackson couldn't handle it. That would have been a show. A well, pretty good idea, just the execution wasn't there. And West Virginia right now is out of sorts in the half court. RJ Cole flips it ahead to Gaffney. Gets downhill, up, blocked. Is that going to be Goldton? They will count the basket. And a foul was called. It's a Goldton. Again, on the drive, the inability to, to contain. And then I'm not sure why in the world Bridges would even attempt, after the whistle's blown, to go up and take this off the glass. Damon Kerrigan got a piece of it. Bridges on the contest. I think he got called for the foul. West Virginia just not taking care of the ball at all right now. They had just four turnovers in the first half. They have six here in the second half. Four of them over the last five minutes and no points for the Mountaineers. They've got to settle down and run their stuff. But easier said than done because UConn is just really feeling it now on the defensive end of the floor. They're extending, they're harassing, they're taking away the three-point line. They're trailing on those baseline screens so they don't get caught behind and they're making UConn put the ball on the deck. Excuse me, West Air Virginia put the ball on the deck. It's a 10-0 run over the last 3.30. Three ball, no. That would have been huge for UConn. McNeil passed it up. Runner off the glass. Tip back, no. Rebound goes to Pauly. Gaffney ahead. Wild pass, and Hawkins couldn't save it. Oh, 
What a lineup coming up on Saturday, 3 Eastern on ABC, the 26th MLS Cup Final. The Portland Timbers battle the New York City Football Club. Then at 8 Eastern on ESPN, the 87th Annual Heisman Trophy Ceremony. 8.30 Eastern on ABC, Steph and the Warriors square off against Joel Embiid and the Sixers. And finally, 10 Eastern on ESPN Plus pay-per-view. It's UFC 269. That is a lineup. And that is a much needed shot falling for West Virginia, Jalen Bridges. Well, for the first time in a while, West Virginia settled down. They ran their stuff. They find, found Bridges wide open in the corner. He didn't have a lot of time, but he did a good job with the quick release. Another goaltend called. This time it's Polycap. Just a step slow on the recovery and UConn is anything but a step slow. They do a great job of releasing and slipping screens to the basket. They've got good floor spacing, allowing Whaley that one-on-one -on -one right to the rim. Malik Curry. Here's Taz. Contested three. No, and the rebound cannot be pulled down, but it was a nice hustle by Jalen Bridges, and he forces a foul. I think they got Tyler Pauly. That's his third. So Whaley and Pauly both with three now for UConn. West Virginia just can't get anything clean going to the rim. They are fortunate they found Bridges in the corner, but Sherman and McNeil have been on lockdown this half. Sherman, crafty move off the glass. Taz Sherman, that's pretty right there. Now that's his footwork at its best. They do a nice, they run a nice special for him right on the baseline. He just pops out, little ball fake and little spin. No one steps up to help. Two point game, 8-19 to play. Now Bob Huggins stepping up the pressure. He's got to change the pace of this game. Try to get UConn out of their rhythm in the half court. He's doing that by extending his defense. Shot clock already down to 18. They were still at the logo. Jackson bounce pass. That's beautiful pass. Whaley finishes. That's terrific offense by UConn. Just a misdirection. They. Had the shooter on the weak side of the floor. Played a little two-on-two on two in the middle of the floor. There was no help in the paint. Timeout, Bob Huggins. West Virginia trails by four. This is what UConn wants to do. They, a little misdirection, a little two-on-two. Two. It's like playing in your driveway. No help. Thanks, guys. A lot of good hoops this week going on right now. UConn leading West Virginia by four here in Morgantown. Some work to do on this end. Tim Welsh, what do you want to see differently from West Virginia down the stretch? Well, they got to change sides of the floor with the ball and get this man right there to the rim. And they did a great job of just kind of spacing the floor, getting Sherman in the middle of the floor where the help spread out and let him attack one on one. UConn, after starting two of eight from the field in the second half, is six for their last nine. Step back three. No rebound, Pauly Cap. And West Virginia, a chance to tie or take the lead with seven to play. West Virginia likes when R.J. Cole's not in the game and they'll try to take advantage of this brief period where he's out. Sherman. Inside, great feed, nice catch. We're tied at 47. A good spacing, good time out there by Hubs. Understanding they needed to space the court, spread it, take away the weak side help, and attack from the middle of the floor. Dan Hurley will take a timeout of his own. Settle in, folks. We're going to the wire. 907 total. It started at Walsh College with 71, 97 at Akron, then on to Cincinnati where he had so much success. The one season at K-State and then the alma mater called and he couldn't turn it down. One of just two coaches with 300 plus at two different schools. The other Roy Williams who was on the big time list with him just past Roy.
this season. And up next, he'll be chasing the legendary Jim Calhoun, who did most of his damage at UConn. Well, Hugs talked about it this week. So this UConn team reminds him of some of Jim Calhoun's best. And the shot blocking ability, the ability to overplay and create havoc with your pressure defense, and the ability to get out and transition and fly up and down the court. RJ Cole misses Jackson chasing, saved in, and West Virginia comes away with it. West Virginia just doing a great job of matching UConn's intensi intensity to find those loose balls, pick them up, and attack. 11 lead changes, four ties. Here's Bridges. Sherman with 10 to shoot. This is where Taz Sherman can go to work. Oh, great pass to Bridges, three. Taz Sherman, offensive rebound, fouled, and the bucket won't go, but Taz will go to the line. An interesting adjustment, and you see the difference in the last few possessions for UConn. They've, they've gotten to the three guards. Hugs, understanding that the UConn pressure was really bothering him, so what the, he did, he inserted Curry in the lineup, put Sherman and McNeil off the ball. So now they have three guys that can ta attack and handle this pressure. And now you see Sherman starting to loosen up a little bit in the last few minutes. Ooh, the first one, no good for the 86% free throw shooter, Taz Sherman, who has 19 points on the evening. See Pauly back in. Whaley just picked up his fourth foul. Pauly has three of his own. Free throws for West Virginia this evening, just five of 14 at the line. That makes it six of 15, and it gives them a one-point lead. Well, not only Bob Huggins making in-game adjustments, but Dan Hurley is, has as well. Freed up R.J. Cole, run some specials for him to free him up for some shots. Also, really extending the defense to take away the threes in the second half that hurt them in the first half. If you joined us late, UConn playing without two of their top players, Adama Sunogo and Tyrese Martin. In a hostile environment here in Morgantown. Corner three. No, and the rebound belongs to McNeil. It was a good look for Pauly in the corner. And West Virginia very fortunate that Bridges overextended, overhelped on that drive to the middle of the lane. Left the dangerous Polly wide open from his sweet spot. Bridges lost his footing, the shot is blocked. No, there's a foul. Jalen Bridges will go to the line for two, and the foul goes on Tyler Polly. That is his fourth foul now, too. So Whaley and Polly with four and over five minutes to play. Sometimes when you come from behind, it looks like a foul, but isn't. It looked like a clean block from behind. Polly at six foot nine. It's all ball, but when you come from behind, the officials sometimes don't have a good angle, and they guess at the call. That looked like a clean block for Polly. That's tight. He was in the air so long, it probably looked awkward to the official, but that is a tough call for Polly to go to the bench. That's where, as an official, the great officials slide and get a better angle. And if they don't have a good angle, they have to pass on the call. You can't just assume it's a foul because it looks like one. Off the rim. Nothing at the line there. Jackson lost it, but saves it. And it's a wild throw over Cole. Just a little reckless there from UConn. And you can see it right there. Have you ever had one of those moments on the sideline, Tim Welsh? Well, Andre Jackson can bring you to those moments. And certainly a very, very talented athletic player. Does a lot of great things. But at times, sometimes pushes the pedal a little bit too hard for Dan Hurley's liking. Under five to play. Malik Curry has not scored tonight for West Virginia. He was Old Dominion's leading scorer the last couple seasons. Bob Huggins has liked what Curry's done this season. He won't like that. Here is Jackson. Jackson, as we just said, can push the pedal. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. That was excellent anticipation and great ball pressure to start. It all started with Cole. 
11 turnovers for West Virginia. I think the thing that will frustrate Bob Huggins most, some of them have just been unforced. There's a whistle on the drive. I think they got Jackson for the foul. That's his third. You know, they, they seem almost unforced, but they're forced because of the fact that the pressure on the basketball makes you do things that you're uncomfortable doing out there on the floor. You're not used, used to doing. And that's what UConn's defense does to you. The constant harassment, the, the length, the contesting almost every dribble in the half court. Sherman working on Cole, he poked it loose. RJ Cole with the steal. Three ball, Hawkins. He's fouled on the shot. Bridges got him on the arm. It's three free throws coming up for the freshman Jordan Hawkins. Last few possessions, too much dribbling in traffic. That's a recipe for disaster against this UConn defense. And that was just basic. You come at me, I'm going to strip you right in the middle of the floor. And Sherman just a little loose with the basketball. Huggins not happy about that right there. Hawkins goes to the line for threes, an 83.5% free throw shooter. Freshman, true freshman, number 59 on the ESPN 100 last season. And this is the second. And we talked to Bob Huggins today. His main concern, and he had a lot of concerns. Rightfully so with this very, very good UConn team. He said, I'm not sure we can get good shots. It's going to be very hard to run our offense. We're going to have to really execute and be fundamental with our passing, our cutting, and our dribbling. Full court pressure here. Hawkins picking up Keedrian Johnson. 13 lead changes. The largest lead has been just five by West Virginia. There's a foul on Hawkins, and it's West Virginia down three in Morgantown against the 15th ranked team in the country. ESP. Well, it is an intriguing matchup coming up next between K-State and Marquette. This one's lived up to expectations. The two guards we highlighted in the open have lived up to the hype. R.J. Cole has 14. He does so much for this team, though, the way he dominates the offense. And then Taz Sherman, Tim, he's hit big shots tonight. And if uh, they want a chance to win this, he's probably going to have to hit a few more. Well, the thing about R.J. Cole is that you have to admire and you're impressed with what Dan Hurley, he moves him around. He's not just the point guard, runs the team, has to have the ball in his hand. He can play off the ball. And his on-ball defense has been terrific in the last seven, eight minutes of this game. He's caused a lot of harassment, uh, some unforced turnovers by just pressuring the basketball and being out on the perimeter and off the ball, giving great help as well. One for two at the line. That has been an issue tonight for West Virginia. They've shot better from three from a percentage standpoint than they have from the free throw line. Sherman Strip gets right back to it. Over the shot blocker, a cook. What a finish from Taz Sherman. What a finish. Not sure how he squeezed that home. And a cook, a cook was right there. Looked like ready to block the shot or at least contest it where he couldn't find an angle. Now UConn out of sorts in the half court. Polycap dove on it, and the possession arrow belongs to West Virginia. Well, this crowd has kept West Virginia back in this game, and it's been their defense and Sherman's ability just to fight his way. They're taking away the three, and as all good players do, they find a different way to beat you, and Sherman, in the last few minutes now, has found a way to get into the lane, rebound the basketball, and squeeze in some points. Adrian Johnson running the point for West Virginia. Lobs inside. Polycap up. And a whistle, it was a late whistle. If this is on Whaley, it is not though. It is on a cook, a cook. And that's just his first. You better not be weak if you take that ball inside against this UConn front line because they are coming at you full force, not to contest, to send it back. And West Virginia in the last few minutes has done a great job of just getting the ball up to the rim, getting fouled, or bringing it home. What they haven't done, obviously, all night long, and it's been a killer for them, has been at the free throw line. 
Well, after that miss, the 7 of 20 from the stripe. That is tough. Bob Huggins will not be happy with that number, especially. He won't be happy with it regardless, but if they lose this game, he will really be upset with that number. There's a big one to put the Mountaineers back in front. And how about the fans back in the building? Finally, back for college basketball. These are the atmospheres we missed last season. Well, UConn's got to try to spread the floor now, attack this pressure, and make West Virginia pay. Get the ball in the middle of the floor to, to a Jackson, and then attack and try to get to the free throw line themselves. McNeil kicked it. You can tell they're feeding off the energy of this Mountaineer crowd. West Virginia now, they're starting to smell a little blood. They're getting, they're extending their defense. They may do a little trapping themselves on the wing, trying to get the ball out of Cole's hands. Cole guarded by Bridges. Eight to shoot. Jackson skips it. A cook. Three to shoot. Jackson has to get it up and won't. West Virginia changed defenses on that possession. They extended their pressure and then they fell back into an into a zone where they trapped, soft trapped on the wing, and West UConn never really got adjusted or organized. And they kind of played back on their heels. They never got into the gaps. They didn't attack. They, they took too much time trying to probe the defense and trying to really find out what that was instead of just attacking, get the ball in the middle of the floor, and get it, get it right to the rim. UConn just one field goal the last five and a half minutes and three turnovers over that stretch. Sherman to McNeil. Have not heard much from McNeil in the second half. Sherman for three. Jackson runs down the rebound. Andre Jackson. Here's Cole. Cole for three over McNeil. That goes over the backboard. West Virginia basketball. West Virginia's got UConn sped up. That time they were in a straight man. They gave a lot of help on the pick and roll, but they're doing a better job containing Cole, not giving him anything into the lane or open look from the perimeter. Feels like an old Big East matchup, doesn't it, Tim Welsh? Tight games, one-point games. <laughs> Both coaches fired up. A lot of energy in the building. A lot of energy coming up Saturday. College basketball doubleheader starting with eighth-ranked Kansas and a rivalry renewed, the Border War. They host Missouri at 315 Eastern. Then some other old-school rivals square off in South Bend. Number 10, Kentucky takes on Notre Dame at 515 Eastern. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. What are the conversations right now if you're Dan Hurley in the Yukon huddle? Well, you gotta just get back to what you do. They're, neither coach is gonna change their philosophies, but I think Dan Hurley's gotta talk about their offense a little bit. They've kind of slowed themselves down. They're kind of back on their heels. West Virginia has extended the pressure. They've changed to a zone. They'll do, they're doing some switching. But they're just gonna run their stuff in the half court because they're solid with that. Get the ball in Cole's hands when they, when they do come back down on offense. On defense, understand that Sherman, they've got to keep him out of the paint. He's trying to drive to the rim, but also understand, do not leave McNeil an open. Sometimes you forget what coaches tell you at halftime when it gets this late in the game. Still stay with what you've done to get to this point. Take away the three-point shot. West Virginia up one under two minutes to play. The Big East Big 12 battle. West Virginia win, and it would be tied up at three between the two conferences. Sherman working on Jackson. Great defense by Jackson. Bob Huggins trying to post up Taz Sherman. Taz, long step, and he tried to flush it, but it won't go. Goodness, he had the angle, just lay it up. Timeout, Dan Hurley. Let's go to the studio with Kevin Connors.
All right, Chucky, great finish in Morgan. Thank you, Kevin. Taz Sherman, Tim, he was trying to tear the roof off this building on that last West Virginia possession. Well, he can't take fault on this because he makes a terrific drive. He just takes off a little bit too much. He has the shot blocker coming over. He probably would have been better served just to throw it high off the glass. Instead, he tried to throw it down. He just lost a little control of the ball, but they are trying to run everything through Taz Sherman. Here, Bob Huggins back in the 1-3-1 zone. A little extended soft pressure. You've got to get somebody in the middle of the floor. They're going to try to get the ball right in the middle to Isaiah Whaley and then attack down to the baseline. UConn without Tyrese Martin and Adama Sunogo, two of their top players. We talked about the tremendous depth of this team. The Huskies have shown that tonight with a great fight in Morgantown. Cole. Six to shoot. The freshman Hawkins. Now Pauly, two to shoot. Hawkins fires. No. And Jackson's putback won't go. Cole wide open for three. Another one for Jackson. He is blocked. And UConn cannot buy a basket on this possession. Oh, way too quick after that last offensive rebound. UConn needed to get reorganized or take it into the gap and kick it to the other side of the floor. They rushed themselves on that on those last two shots. Great effort on the offensive glass, but they needed to get organized. Now, West Virginia is going to run this clock down and try to get Sherman in a one-on-one -on -one situation off a ball screen. Trying to go around the freshman, and he's fouled. That's the ninth team foul on UConn, so it's the one and one for Taz Sherman. Lost possession of the ball, but you see the freshman gets into his body, Jordan Hawkins, and Taz Sherman knew he did not have Andre Jackson on him, so he wanted to take him one-on-one. -on -one. When he had Jackson on him, he tried to go one-on-one -on -one down on the baseline or try to post him up. Jackson is a terrific defender. Hawkins will be, but still a freshman, you saw. Made a freshman mistake reaching in. Free throws have been the issue tonight. Just 8 of 21 from the line as a team. Sherman's 3 for 5. Sometimes it gets into your head when your team is on a dread, having a dreadful night at the line. Even the great free throw shooters sometimes struggle. Hits the first. They came out in full force tonight to the WVU Coliseum to watch the old Big East foes go at it, and it has not disappointed. Sherman doesn't get the roll, but Osaboyan has the rebound. The shot clock is off, and they have to foul. Gabe Osaboyan. Well, Gabe Osaboyan has been aggressive on the offensive end all night long. Took a couple threes that took a couple shots that probably Bob Huggins didn't love, but this is what he's paid to do. Get up on the glass and see they don't make contact with him. You see a cook a cook. He just goes in for the rebound. Takes a weird bounce. Osaboyan takes advantage. There's no body contact. See how Cook a Cook just runs in, trying to go get the ball instead of driving Osaboyan off his spot first, then going to get the basketball. McNeil makes it a three point game. And we all know Osaboyan, a dreadful th free throw shooter, does a great job of finding McNeil before he gets fouled. Chance to make it a two-score game, and he does. West Virginia by four with 17 seconds to play. Tarragon at the top of the 1-3-1 at 6-9, giving UConn some problems. Three, no, a cook, a cook, put back, doesn't go. Another chance, though, for Whaley, and he cuts it back to a two-point or excuse me, a two point game, and a four-minute scoring drought is finally snapped by Connecticut. Well, Chucky, what the 1-3-1 zone does is it extends out and makes you feel uncomfortable. But once the shot goes out up on the rim, the, the zone is so spread out that the opportunity to offensive rebound is really 
at a higher percentage. And you see UConn just clearly just running in undeterred. No one blocking out for West Virginia because everybody's out on the three-point line. Taz Sherman has been great tonight, Tim. He has eight points and an assist in the last eight minutes alone. Well, in the first half, it was all three-point shots and just the ability to knock down and run the offense, kind of a one-on-one -on -one type thing. UConn made the great adjustments at halftime, took away the three. What did Sherman do the last part, 10 minutes of this game? He started to post up. He started to go one-on-one, -on -one, show his experience, the ability to score in a lot of different ways, and the toughness at the rim over the shot blocker down the stretch. 7.4 left in this game. Bob Huggins has climbed the all-time wins list this season. Past Roy Williams recently, and up next is the UConn legend Jim Calhoun. Still a little ways to go, but a chance this season to climb into third all-time. And what a win this would be for his West Virginia Mountaineers. You mentioned it a couple times, Tim. He knew what the task was this week. He knew how tough it was going to be to get this win. But they played very well tonight. Well, you've got to run the baseline and try to get the ball either to Sherman or McNeil right away. They're going to space the court, but you've got Jackson up on the ball. He's harassing. They're going to have to run the baseline and get somebody open on the other side of the floor, and they did. Cole fouls McNeil. He would hit the two free throws last possession for West Virginia. It was just the second time all night that they had made two free throws in a single trip to the line. Just 44% from the stripe tonight, 11 of 25. McNeil is three of four. Good composure on that base. And the out of bounds against the pressure. West Virginia had it really spaced out. He misses. And UConn will have a chance. They've been in games like this already this season. An overtime win over VCU, a double overtime win over Auburn. This is a moment that UConn is familiar with. McNeil hits the second. Where are you going here if you're Dan Hurley? Well, you're going to... Some, something quick. I like a quick three, try to get the offensive rebound and then kick it back out. UConn is, West Virginia is in the 1-3-1 one, one again. So you're going to be able to get a quick shot, get it up quickly, and then get the offensive rebound and throw it back out. Cole shoots, but he was fouled on the shot. No, he wasn't. It's over. West Virginia wins. R.J. Cole's three off the mark, and the Mountaineers hang on to knock off the 15th ranked Huskies. Well, it was the 1-3-1 zone on the last possession again, and they forced Cole up to an uncomfortable position, and he kind of had to take the shot going to his right. Under duress, did a good job spacing the court. He gets open. He tries to draw the foul, but they do a good job of avoiding contact on the perimeter. What a win for West Virginia. You can see what it means. Gabe Osaboy, and make no mistake, his offensive rebound on the missed free throw, a huge moment in this game, Tim. Well, Osaboy, and it's just a team effort, but down the stretch, it was that guy right there, Taz Sherman and Sean McNeil, making big plays, but West Virginia does what they do, change defenses, aggressive to the rim, despite the free throw woes, found a way. Well, West Virginia does it. Q Country Roads. The Mountaineers win it 56-53 over UConn. Let's get you to Lowell Glendo and Lance Blanks in Manhattan for Marquette, Kansas State.